Today I'm going to show you how to create your own comics with Make Believe's Comics. I already have one started for you, but I'm going to walk you through how to start. First, you need to open your internet browser and go to www.makebeliefscomics.com. Once it opens, it's going to give you uh, an enter screen and you'll want to click enter here. You'll see that it opens up with a blank screen template here. I have three squares in my comic strip. If I scroll down, I can choose two panels, three panels, or four panels. You'll want to select whatever is right for your purpose. In order to create, you need to click on, this, on the square in which you want to begin. If you want to add a background, come down to where it says, Are Many Objects and Scenes? On the bottom right side and click there. You'll use the red arrows to start selecting what you want to include. You can include small objects like the ones here, or you can include backgrounds. If I want to select whatever's in the box, I'm going to click it again. If I want to go ahead and have a different scene in the next box, I need to click on the next box, come down to my selection window, and keep going. Let's say I want to have a shop in that one. And I'm going to keep selecting the boxes that I want to put some things in. We'll go back and we'll add the mermaid scene here. Once I have my backgrounds in, I want to go back to the beginning and perhaps start adding people. Here in the middle where it says our diverse cast of characters, you can choose between uh, an injured veteran, looks like Jackie Robinson perhaps, a werewolf, an older woman, a younger woman, a mom perhaps. We have boys and girls and babies and historical figures and vampires and clowns. All kinds, aliens, we have dogs and bunnies and cats and frogs. We have all kinds of people from whom we can choose to put in our comics. I'm going to choose the cat girl. Once you click on her, if I want her to be in panel one, I have to have panel one highlighted. And when I have her in my screen, I can use the arrows to select different emotions or faces. Here it looks like she's happy, she looks angry here, sad, and shocked. Maybe I want her to be shocked at school. So because I want to put her in the first panel here, and I want the shocked looking girl, I'm going to click her again. It puts her in my scene. I can drag her anywhere I want. You notice she only has half a body, so you don't want her to be at the top. I might want her in this corner. I can flip her around by clicking the flip symbol. And then clicking back on her, and I can have her flip this way. Cl uh, clicking it again has her flipping back and forth. If I want to move her back, I come over and I click the move symbol, and I can move her over to this side. Now if I want to add a talking balloon, I come down to the bottom where it says 8 talk balloons. There's also thought balloons. I'm going to pick a thought balloon, and I want my arrows or my dots to be on this side. So I'm going to keep scrolling, and that's a big one. Let's put it in that medium-sized one. I'm going to drag it up, and I'm going to type in the words that I want to say. Oh no, the teacher is missing. When I'm done with this panel, I'm going to click on the next one. Let's say I'm going to have my character go from scene to scene, perhaps looking for her teacher. And here she looks mad. Maybe not yet. Maybe I should put a sad face in. We'll put her in here. And we'll have her in the middle. And let's put another thought bubble in. I like that size. And make sure that your bubbles here match the direction that your person is looking. So I'll say, hmm, she's not at the shop. Where could she be? I'm going to go to the next panel. Now maybe I'm going to pick that she's mad because she doesn't see her anywhere. She is mad and angry. I'm going to put her in. 
and I'm going to flip her around again. I'm going to go back to the move button and I'm going to drag her onto this side. And I'm going to add another thought balloon. Now I'm really getting frustrated. Now she's frustrated. And let's pretend that perhaps her teacher has turned into a mermaid. I'm going to click on this last scene because that's where I want her to be. And there's my happy looking kitty cat girl. And I'm going to use her here. And I'm going to put in some talking balloons and I'll have her talk to her. Let's make it smaller. We're going to move it over. There you are. And maybe the teacher is going to say, I guess my secret is out. She's secretly a mermaid. Isn't that funny? Let's see if we can select it to move it. Alright, so I have my finished comic strip. I want to title it. Now that I've done it, I know what I want it to say. Um... Miss Shelley by the Seashore is what I would call it. And my name is Miss Thompson. And now I'm done. So, I'm finished with my comic. What do I do next? I'm going to click the next button. So here's my comic strip. There's my title and my name. I can't save it. It says here on number two, we don't store comics. If you want, you can print a copy for yourself. You need to check with a grown-up before you print one. Or you can just email it. So I'm going to say it's for me, Ms. Thompson. And you have to put in your email. Some of you may not have an email, so I'm going to give you a little tip here. Just put sample at sample.com. It won't really know if you have an email or not. And then you're going to send it to your teacher or your parents or someone like that. And you're going to email your comic. Over here, you notice I've already created one. I did one about um, a veteran. And if you'll see here, I've got my veteran who's been injured in the war, and I've got a young man, and they're at school. It's the same scene, the same characters the whole time. And so the veteran is saying to the child, Hi there, I'm here to talk to your class about being a veteran. And the kid says, That's cool, we just learned about wars in Afghanistan. And then the uh, veteran says, That's where I fought. I lost my arm after an explosion. And the kid says, I'm glad you're here. I can't wait to hear your story. So they can be educational. And in my classroom, you will need to create the one that is, it, that is educational. Let's say my name is Sally. And I'm going to make up an email, sally at sample.com. And I'm going to email it to my teacher. And I'm going to click email comics. <clears throat> now, when I open my email, I can see right here, I have received a comics. So I'm going to go and click on the one that was emailed to me. And as I wait, I see here that this is the first comic that I made earlier about the teacher being lost and then being found at the seashore. So when you email it to your teacher, it's very easy for them to get the comic that you've made. Here's the other one. Let's let it load. There you go. There's the one about honoring the veterans that was made earlier. 
Your teacher can print it out and keep it for her to grade. Um, or it can be saved on your teacher's computer. That way you don't have to waste paper. I hope that you'll come back and watch this video and that you'll enjoy making your own comics about things you do in social studies or topics in reading or whatever your teacher would like you to do. Enjoy!